Some time back, I gave all of you a primer on how to use heat maps to find the best performing sectors. And it's very important we try to do that again, especially after the recent correction that we saw occurring between the 1st of August and the 14th of August. In fact, you can even take different dates. You can even take it from the peak that occurred uh, a little while back down here all the way 19th of July and till the 15th of August that is down here when there was pressure on the market. So you can take any of those time frames, go to heat maps, check that when that correction was occurring in the market, what sectors or stocks were really outperforming. So you simply do choose the custom dates and then look at what is showing up right on top. What do you see? You see pharma followed by consumer durables and then FMCG. Remember that when we did this in uh, before the elections, FMCG was showing up. It's already an outperforming sector. Now you're getting pharma and consumer durables. So I think these are going to be the two sectors that are going to lead from the front. And that is where you need to be overweight. Now, if you, if you have understood what I've really done, it's an indirect way of, uh, you know, finding out the relative strength of a stock or a sector based on whatever basket you choose under the heat maps. Here I chose indices and I checked which sectors are outperforming. And uh, based on that, we try to extrapolate that, you know, what has done well during a certain phase may continue to do so in the future. Which phase you choose, do you go from high to high, low to low, top to bottom? That depends on the scenario at that point of time. I have given you one example which makes sense in the current phase, which is a bull market. And uh, this is something that we did last year. We found PSU stocks in the October correction. We found FMCG before the elections. And now we are seeing pharma and consumer durables right on top.